So I'm trying something slightly different here. I'm going to give you some background to some geology in the news. So you may well have read about or seen on the TV about these earthquakes which are happening close to Santorini and are causing uh, some upset for the local authorities and for the tourists who would like to be going there for holiday. So I thought I'd talk about some of the background behind the geology. I'm not qualified to talk about the risk and the hazard and assess the risk and the hazard. I'm going to talk about some of the ways that geophysicists work out what kind of uh, signature the earthquakes have and whether or not they're tectonic or volcanic. So Santorini is just here in the Aegean. Here is uh, Cyprus and Rhodes and this is the Peloponnese Peninsula down here. So we have this volcanic island Santorini, you can see it's kind of like a, a crescent moon. There's another one there which is a volcanic island here. So volcanic islands within the Aegean Sea. Santorini is a beautiful place. Uh, you can see on the inside of that crescent moon there are very steep cliffs and then on the outside there's this gentle slope. So this is a typical caldera. So it was a big volcano and about 1500 BC, so three and a half thousand years ago, there was a big eruption that was a caldera collapse eruption. So it destroyed the entire volcanic edifice pretty much and evacuated the magma chamber in several square miles worth of magma chamber. And we think that this eruption was sufficiently severe that it caused massive devastation regionally. Uh, was probably the start of the downfall of the Minoan Empire down on Crete. So it was a big eruption. This is what Santorini is known for, rather than for its earthquakes. But just recently there have been these uh, series of uh, tremors. <coughs> this is just in the last week from the USGS uh, earthquake monitoring site. So these are all of the earthquakes in the last week. There's Santorini there. This is the in blue, this is the magnitude 5.3, which has got the authorities taking it a little bit more seriously. Prior to that, they were all magnitudes 4 and less. So if we look at uh, what's called the focal mechanism solution, that's what this thing is here. And uh, if you ever go to these kinds of briefings, you'll hear about focal mechanisms or CMT solutions, and that's what these are. And these are, if you imagine this, as effectively you're looking down on a beach ball, the segments which are blue are segments where if energy is radiating out in that direction, then it's expansion, okay? So this is movement away from the source, away from the center in these directions, and where it's white is movement towards the, so the source, towards the center. So you're looking down on this, so in the horizontal, then you've got expansion and in the vertical you've got contraction. So you have a compressive first motion in the horizontal direction and it's oriented approximately like this. Okay, So you have your axis of the beach ball and at right angles to that is the main motion of uh, the ground um, associated with the earthquake. Okay, We'll talk about these a little bit later as well. <coughs> so what you can see here is Santorini is this nice round island, so that's a volcanic island. This one here is probably another caldera with a little hole in it. This one's a round volcanic island. This one's quite clearly a volcanic island with a mountain in the middle. Again, this is probably Naxos. Here is another uh, volcanic island. Okay, so the round ones are volcanic islands. But you can see there's this chain here of long thin islands that run like this, and you can see ridges in the sea, which basically run uh, southwest to northeast, like this. They're steeper on their southern slopes and they're gentler on their northern slopes. And these don't look like volcanoes. In fact, they're oriented very similar to the orientation of this fault plane solution. So it seems as though the motion on these fault planes is somehow associated with these islands which aren't these round volcanic islands, but they're the ones and the ridges that look with this kind of north-east-south-west trend. So 
to understand any further, we need to start to look at the regional geology. So this is a plot of uh, historical earthquakes in the region, and you can see these white ones. There's kind of a big ring, an arc, round just to the south of the Pel Peloponnese and Crete and Rhodes, sitting round like this. And this essentially tra traces out a subduction zone. So if we think about what's happening in the Mediterranean, we had an old ocean, the Tethys, uh, it's subducting underneath Europe and is dragging Africa northwards. So this is the Mediterranean, which is the final remnants of the Tethian Ocean. So that arc that we saw around the Peloponnese and Crete and Rhodes, the Hellenic Arc, is essentially this arc here, like this. We have subduction just to the south of it, making a trench. And if we look in the uh, bathymetry, we can see these darker blues running around like this. That's the trench. So if you have subduction, you're taking wet ocean crust, which is cold, into the mantle. As it heats up, it will eventually dehydrate and the water goes up into the surrounding mantle and causes the mantle to melt. That dehydration doesn't start until the ocean crust gets to a certain temperature and typically that happens at about 100 kilometers depth. So you have this region as the crust is going down where you don't get any volcanism because it's not got hot enough to dehydrate yet and cause wet melting. When it does cause wet melting, the magma rises, comes through the crust and produces the uh, volcanic island chains. Okay, so we have a gap between the subduction front, the subduction related islands and the volcanic islands which sit further back. So that's what we have. We have these subduction related islands so these are essentially a little subduction mountain chain which runs through here. This is the Hellenic Arc through here like this and then about 50 or 100 kilometers further back we start to get the volcanism Santorini and these other volcanic islands. So as I've said the ocean crust is pretty much the ocean is pretty much gone. You know the Mediterranean is this tiny remnant of a large ocean. So what happens when Africa finally hits, collides with Europe? So here's Africa coming along. It's made of continental crust and that's much less dense than the mantle. So it won't go down. It will float. But it's still connected to the ocean crust that is going down. So we, the ocean crust is trying to continue to sink and this is pulling it back up again. So the only way that you can continue to sink the ocean crust is either by breaking it off, which will happen eventually, but before that happens, you can steepen the slab. If you steepen the slab like that, it means that it can go down a little bit more. But if you steepen the slab, then what's going to happen is that you have to have mantle flow to fill the space. So the mantle flows in to fill this space. So this is called slab rollback, okay, because the slab is rolling back towards Africa and it causes this mantle flow which puts the crust sitting on top of it into tension. So although we're in a convergent regime and we have these, this convergent mountain chain that runs behind the Hellenic Arc, behind that the crust is into tension. So if you put crust in tension like this, when it breaks it will make normal faults and you can hear about normal faults in my one minute plus, the three kinds of fault. So do look at that up if you're interested. And if you have normal faults in this kind of crust, what happens is they sit at an angle like this. To extend it, you uh, slide down on that angle and you get this amount of extension. If you have repeated normal faults in the same direction, then what you end up with is this tilting of the crustal plates. And so they end up, if you have C there, with producing these islands which are gentle on one side and steep on the other. Again, gentle on one side and steep on the other. So that's what we see in those islands that aren't the volcanic islands. So this explains why we have that steep side on to the south and the gentle slope to the north because they're these normal faulted fault blocks uh, associated with tension in the crust because of this slab rollback that's going on. If we look at this particular fault here, which is being stretched like this, if you have an earthquake, 
we can consider what that's going to look at, like in one of those moment tensor solutions. Okay, so if we consider this to be a sphere, okay, this is we're going to make construct one of these beach balls. So we have this sphere, and what we do is we project the fault plane onto it. So it's like that, and we know that on the left side of that plane, the horizontal motion is outwards. So this will be blue on the left side of that plane. And on the right side, the horizontal motion is outwards as well. So you end up with these two conjugate half spheres sitting like this, where the motion horizontally is outwards, like that and that. And then if you're uh, looking down, standing looking down on the fault plane, then the motion above you will be away from you, will be downwards. So we end up with this white region here at the top, and there's a corresponding one underneath if you're underneath. The motion on this plate block will be moving upwards, so we have another white one on the top. So that's how you uh, interpret these beach balls. So there we are, that's what it said, what the motion is on that beach ball. So now if we look at the USGS solution, this is, they're always shown essentially with you looking down on them. So the motion looking down vertical motion is away from you, downwards, so it's white, and the horizontal motion is in this direction here, outwards, like that. So it's stretching just like these normal faults. So if we go back to the map, what we can see is the orientation of the axis of this beach ball, basically parallel to the orientation of these series of fault bounded ridges and islands, and the main motion of the fault is out like this. So the main, the main extension of the fault is in this uh, north-west-southeast orientation. So you're stretching across these things. So we think that these are all tectonically related earthquakes associated with these kinds of faults that are bounding the ridges and the islands, and not volcanic related earthquakes. Volcanic earthquakes, although they might follow, magma might move along a fault like this, in general the uh, fault plane solutions are not all identical, which they are here. They tend to be much more complex and you get much more complex kinds of motions, so seismic signals tend to be more complex. They tend to move in a more systematic way as well, with time. These look much more like tectonic earthquakes. So what are the main risks that we have, that we're looking at here in Santorini? Probably not an eruption. There's probably not magma moving, this is probably all tectonic. Uh, as you saw here, the vertical there is a vertical motion when you slip on this fault, actually the majority of the movement is vertical. So that could mean that you end up producing tsunamis because that way you move a lot of water, change the water level and it has to rush back in again. So that's how you make tsunamis. And the other thing we saw uh, when we looked at that image of Santorini, we have these very steep cliffs. So if you have seismic shaking, some of these cliffs might be destabilized and you might end up with landslides. And in fact, here you can see a couple of landslides, ancient landslides, which are uh, decorating the edge of that cliff. So they're the main risks. Uh, seismic shaking, uh, which might produce landslides, and potential tsunami risks as well, if you have a large uh, earthquake offshore. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this brief explanation. If you did, please do comment and like it in the comments box because that'll let me know that you want more of this kind of stuff as well.